My name is Steve Halton. I'm a member of the Basingstoke Makerspace. In this video, I'll be going through the detailed steps to create a cookie cutter incorporating a logo. There's a companion short video that shows the overall process. Before we start, this video assumes that we already have a vector format version of the stamp that I want to put on my cookies. Here is the one I'm going to use in Coral Draw. Notice that the outline of the shape is defined by a set of points. This file has been saved in SVG format. I'm going to be using Blender to define the 3D shape that incorporates this logo and a specialised version of Cura to prepare it for 3D printing. Both of these pieces of software are free to use. I'll be using the newest version of Blender, that is version 2.8. The interface has changed quite a bit. If your version doesn't look like what you're seeing on the screen, then you should probably upgrade. Blender starts up in the 3D view with a cube loaded into the space. I'll be using this cube in a little while, so rather than deleting it, I'm going to change its name to Clip and hide it by selecting the eyeball. The cookies I'm aiming for will be circular, so I'm going to start by adding a circle into the blender. This needs to be centred on the zero zero point and scaled to have a radius of one unit. In this case I'm using a NURB circle because it will give better 3D results, but before I can manipulate it I need to convert it into a mesh. The circle needs to be duplicated four times. You can see the four circles we've got listed here. Now that there are four of them in the list, I'm going to take the first one and make it a bit bigger. This will form the outer base of the cookie cutter. The second circle needs to be expanded just a little and moved up to form the outer top edge. So these two circles are going to define the outer edge. I select both of them and join them into a single object. Blender can then be switched to edit mode using the tab key. Now we can see the individual points that make up the selected shape. We pick a loop of points by pressing down the ALT key and selecting an edge. Notice that Blender works out a set of edges that form a loop and selects them all. A second loop can be selected by holding down the SHIFT and ALT key and clicking on an edge. Now that we have two edges, there's a menu item here to bridge between these loops. So, this gives us an open-ended, truncated cone. We need to seal off the two ends. Dragging the mouse selects all the points on the top, and the F key puts a face between all these points. We go down to the bottom and do the same thing there. This shape is going to be the outer part of the cookie cutter. Let's label it as frame and hide it for the moment. The other two circles are going to form a cylinder. We'll use this to punch a hole through the frame. One of the circles is moved down by a little, let's say minus 0 0.1. The other is moved up, let's say by 1.3. We use the same procedure to assemble these two circles into a single object and make them into a cylinder.
When I make the frame visible again, you can see that the punch extends beyond where the frame is. If these ends both stopped at the same level as the frame levels, then the Boolean operator would have trouble sorting out the common boundary. So, now I select the frame object and a modifier. I want to perform a Boolean operation between this and the punch. The operation I want is difference. Just to check this is correct, what does this look like if the punch is not visible? This looks about right, so I can apply the operation and we're done with the punch object and we can delete it. Now we have the basic outline of the cutter part, but we need a brace to hold the punch in position in the middle. We can build that by adding a square. If we make the square about a third of the width, it looks okay. extruding it by about 0.1 and it feels like the right sort of shape. We can use the boolean operator to merge it with the frame. So now we have a shape that is a basic cookie cutter. At this point it's worth saving because we can use this same shape for many different circular cookies. I've saved it under the name Cookie Frame 01 for the moment and let's hide that shape and move on. The next step is to add the stamp. As I said before, this has been saved as a vector file in SVG format. It can be imported into Blender. When I do that, the result is quite small. I need to convert that object into a mesh so that we can manipulate it. And now I need to center it so that it's in the middle. The SVG as it comes in is quite small. So once I've centered, I'm going to switch back to object mode and scale it up by a factor of 10. How does this look against the frame? It seems a little bit small still, so I'm going to scale it up by a bit, uh, make it 12. But this time I'm going to use a negative X scale so that it mirrors the image so the cookies turn out the right way around. Now we need to extrude the stamp. I'm just going to drag it up by way too much.
You remember the clip object we had at the beginning? I'm going to use that to ensure that the stamp is the correct length for the cookie cutter. Um, again, I'm going to go to object mode and use the modifier. This time, I only want the intersection between the stamp and the clip object. Now that the stamp is the right length, I can delete the clip object and go to merging the stamp with the frame. This time, I'm going to start from the frame object. I want the union of that with the stamp object. Again, I'm going to check that looks OK if the stamp object is made invisible, apply the operation, and then delete the stamp. And now I'm going to go back and delete the SVG file that had the original shape of the stamp in it. This is the final shape we need. I can save this to a Blender file in case I need to edit it later. And the last thing I do in Blender is to export it as an STL file, that is a three-dimensional object, for the 3D printing. In order to actually print this 3D object, it needs to be sliced. This is done using the Cura software. This is a specially modified version of the Cura software that's designed to service Lulzbot printers. I load the STL file, and once again, we find that the scale is a bit odd. I need to select this tiny object in the center and set its width to a suitable value. Once I've done that, I save the object as a G-code file, and I can download that onto the 3D printer. And there you have it. Those are all the steps you need to go through the process of creating the cookie cutter. Of course, as the other companion video shows, you then need to use that during your cooking to stamp out the cookies 